Hey all, it's Andrew Couch here, and in this How Tuesday video, we're not going to be doing any coding. Instead, I wanted to make a video on some goals I have for data science in 2021. But before I start this, um, I wanted to say that I have a Google Form link uh, in the description because I am running up towards my one year anniversary for the Tidy Tuesday project. And for that one year anniversary, I wanted to make a Q&A video. So I created a Google Sheets um, or a Google Form uh, sheet, and you can just basically enter in a name. So you can say like first name, your Twitter or your YouTube username, and you can just ask me a question. And you know, th these questions kind of be about like my background, data science as a whole, you know, advice for uh, what class to take in college or, you know, how to do interviewing and stuff like that. So I figured I'd do that. So you guys could have asked me just anything what you want, anything you wanted, and I could go over that for my one year anniversary. So the five things that I'm going to be looking at uh, for data science in 2021 is mostly skill development. So one of the first things I really want to emphasize, I really want to start learning is just learning DevOps. So for me, just as a data scientist, I really expected myself to mostly doing like EDAs, modeling, um, et cetera. But I never really expected to do any deployment. I thought, you know, we'd pass it off to a DevOps team. However, in my current role, I'm basically a full stack data scientist. So I actually have to use things like Docker, Kubernetes, uh, Flask, et cetera. And for me, as someone who really taught himself, taught myself how to do a lot of data science projects through you know, random side projects where you don't actually have to do a lot of deployment. Um, I'm really not familiar with how to use Docker. I mean, all those like containerizers and stuff like that. So for 2021, I'm definitely going to be focusing on, you know, how to deploy my models onto like an API, um, into containers and et cetera. So I think I'll probably stick with Docker just because my team uses Docker, but I also might do some Flask stuff. So you're probably going to see me kind of look into using it and maybe in doing it with like uh, shiny dashboards and et cetera. Um, my fourth or my second skill that I want to learn is basically how to write more efficient code. And I'm going to do it uh, two ways. The first way is I'm going to probably just do a bunch of lead coding. Uh, I definitely am not a, a solid programmer at all, but I can do some basic beginner lead code questions. And I think they're pretty fun. So I figured I'd do some lead code um, throughout uh, 2021. I'm also gonna be looking at 538's um, The Riddler. So let me see if there's a, um, which I've made a video on, I think a few weeks ago. So I'll probably start working on like, you know, some Riddler questions um, every other week. Um, I might not make a video on it, but it's something that I'll probably be working on um, throughout the year, just to develop uh, some better um, knowledge of how to write more efficient code and just how to approach things in a more creative way. Um, that I'm not used to, such as just doing the traditional charting and stuff like that. So for the lead code, I think it just is pretty helpful for a lot of data scientists is to like think of it as like a software engineering um, discipline. Um, I think a lot of people think data scientists are more of a stats discipline where I think it's going to be more transitioning towards you know, software engineering. Uh, so I think practicing software engineering uh, best use cases of best practices is probably the good idea to I'm kind of um, future proof or at least learn um, the, the skills before it starts transitioning towards that software engineering path. Um, the third thing that I'm I want to learn is something that I don't think is very useful in my field, but I think it's pretty useful um, if I want to do a lot of data visualiz visualizations, which I like to do as like a side hobby, which is to learn D3. Uh, D3 is like a JavaScript language, basically made for charting. So if you look at like New York Times 538, how you see a lot of really nice interactive charts, um, they're not really written in R, but they're probably written in like D3. Um, and I believe there are libraries with D3 and R that I think would be kind of interesting to explore, but I don't really know how to use D3 at all. And I think it'd be a fun language to learn just because um, it's a very, it seem, to me, it seems like a very rewarding language to learn because you get the instant gratification of a nice looking chart. And what I really like about D3 is it really forces um, people to use different charts that aren't your traditional bar charts, scatter plots. You can do some interesting like uh, bubble charts. Um, I know there's a lot of like synchrograms, stuff like that. So I'm just going to do a quick little Google thing. 
and you can see there's a huge selection of charts um, that are pretty cool. And I think it'd be an interesting uh, language to learn just casually and uh, nothing too serious. But um, I think a lot of the charts are really cool. And, you know, you never, you never know if you want to go into like data journalism. Um, I think learning D3 is a pretty good asset to have. Uh, or if you're making very, um, uh, very uh, productionalized uh, dashboards, D3 might be a good language to learn too. I just find it interesting because you can make a lot of cool charts, um, but uh, it might be useful in the future. Uh, you never really know. So the fourth thing that I really want to do is integrate data science into my own hobbies. And I think I can do this in a bunch of ways. So I think a Raspberry Pi would be pretty fun to mess with. And I think it'd be kind of cool to you know, start a project, you know, make a model and put it in like TensorFlow and then deploy it to a Raspberry Pi and just put it around the house. So I think maybe buying a Raspberry Pi, since they're pretty cheap, and just doing some software engineering, uh, you know, maybe using some Python that I learned um, in the past uh, and during college and then integrating it with R would be a cool thing to do. Um, I also think, like, um, for me, so I really like coffee, trying to integrate uh, data science and machine learning into coffee would be pretty cool. Um, coffee is definitely an expensive hobby, um, but things like this where they have, like, a bunch of sensor data with like the um, pressure and the uh, water temperature in an espresso machine would be kind of interesting to have as a data scientist for someone to me, for someone like me who both uh, does a lot of data science and likes a lot of coffee to kind of like do an analysis of it and see how I can like optimize my own tastes. So I think just integrating, you know, kind of, uh, kind of some of my skills in data science into some side hobbies that I like to do um, that aren't directly related to data science would be kind of fun. Um, and it would be kind of a cool thing to make a few videos on it. Lastly, my main goal for 2021 is to be language agnostic. So for me, I'm definitely a predominant R user. Um, however, I should probably learn a little bit more Python where I can basically use Python and R interchangeably. And one of the ways I'm going to do it is probably just download one um, you know, IDE. I think Visual Studio Code is a pretty good one. I know there's also PyCharm, but... I have VS Code right now, and I've been using it at my work. Just I'm messing around with it. I don't really do any pro. I don't really do any projects with it, but I definitely mess around on VS Code if I have some free time. So I think probably for 2021, you might see a few Python videos. Uh, probably not about just teaching Python, but more about integrating, you know, previous R users, R users into the Python environments. So you know, transitioning from like the tidyverse uh, using dplyr to like pandas or numpy. And then transitioning from like tidy models to scikit-learn and kind of doing some comparisons. Um, so that's basically one thing that I'll definitely be focusing on is trying to be more uh, language agnostic, you know, really sharpening my skills in Python. Even though I think Python is a pretty simple language to learn like academically, academically, but using it as a data scientist and putting it into your projects when you come from an R and tidyverse background uh, could be a potentially a little challenging since it's a different uh, framework of programming. Uh, since it's like a class object oriented programming. So I think that's one thing I definitely will be focusing on. And I'm, I'm sure I'll make a few more videos on, you know, Python, probably maybe, probably just pandas, scikit-learn and maybe some other uh, libraries, but you know, pretty simple libraries that uh, mostly everyone uses in their data science stack. So I know this is a pretty short video. Um, I had uh, Christmas and now I have New Year's, so I didn't want to do a lot of coding, uh, but I will be making a, uh, a dashboard, R Shiny dashboard video about like modules, and I also make I want to make a uh, R Shiny video on comparing like Flux dashboard, Shiny dashboard, and all those other Shiny dashboard frameworks. Um, in a more uh, uh, so I'll probably do that in a few weeks. Um, I will say that make sure you write uh, you submit a question on my Q and A video form in uh, the description uh, because I'd like to get that video uh, prepared. But. I'll uh, see you guys next week and tidy on.